Leo, welcome on in. Welcome to your 2022 astrological forecast with tarot. Yes. I mean, I'm going to be talking to you about the astrology for you this year. Um, so it's going to be pretty involved. Um, and we'll just see what cards pop out randomly as I'm talking about the astrology. And I'm just going to read as spirit leads, okay? But we're going to cover three main areas of life, relationships, romance, career, money, and health and healing. So let me remind y'all, for those of you who need to know, I know most of you already know, this is a general reading, right? Uh, watch your sun, moon, rising, but this is most accurate for the rising signs. If you don't know your rising sign, you need to go uh, online to a place like astro.com and look it up and you know then you'll know what your rising sign is and you can get a more accurate read but as always nothing is going to be as accurate as a private reading and so if you are interested in making that investment in yourself for the new year so you can figure out how the energies are uniquely impacting you well you got to come to me for that reading and i am running a special 60 minutes for a hundred dollars so let's see what came out the abundance um, could be reuniting with somebody this year or um, going to a lot of gatherings, having a lot of friends. Let me say um, that with your north node this year in the 10th house might be career related. Um, I don't know how much of it is. Um, we got a visitor here, Miss Kitty. Let me get her to move on. So it might be career related, given that North Node placement, um, you know, and that's putting the South Node in the fourth house of home, family, sense of belonging. So overall this year, you are striving for success. And I just heard some of you reconciling, reconciling something um, happily within yourself. And I think that's a great thing, right? But with that North Node in the 10th house, um, you're trying to accomplish something. Um, probably higher status, um, if not with your career, with your material possessions. Um, I don't know, maybe getting a new car. Um, I'll, you know, I, I don't really see, you know, house and all of that quite happening because of what, what's going on with your fourth house this year. But um, in some respect, you're trying to get higher status in life. But there's going to be extra effort required in order for you to get advancement. And yeah, so I do see with the moon... This might have to do with your emotions, okay? Um, use of your intuition, but I'm also hearing the word shrouded, and I know I'm hearing concealed, and so some of you, perhaps a Cancer or a Pisces is relevant here that you might be reconciling this year with that person. Um, or again, if you have a prominent Cancer Scorpio placements, it's you reconciling something within yourself. Uh, and I'm hearing reuniting something within yourself that and this is a strange message, but I'm hearing something that became fragmented. And now I'm hearing that you disowned something you disowned about yourself. And I'm hearing reintegrating now. Okay. Um, so it's of an emotional nature, maybe an intuitive nature as well. Uh, and maybe it's deep in your subconscious. You can't even consciously put your finger on what it is, but that thing is getting reconciled. Or reintegrated back into um, your life this year. Wow, that was a message. Thank you, Spirit. <laughs> okay, so um, now in April, the North Node will go into your ninth house. So that could bring about some really uh, pleasant surprises that in some way boosts your faith and boosts your um, interest in spirituality. And that's going to really help you with your confidence throughout the year. So again, right, this is a very spiritual card you know the moon has a lot to do with the hidden realm the ethereal okay um and so with that fourth house in the south node you might find that family and private matters are in some way taking a back seat to 10th house issues um this month and right that's kind of having to do with um private versus public life or family versus professional. And, you know, so if the fourth house matters are not necessarily taking a back seat, in some way you are having to find a healthy balance, a healthy give and take between these, these two kind of opposing areas of life. 
you want to know more about this, I suggest y'all watch the Aquarius reading because there's probably going to be some mirroring there, right? Aquarius is dealing with their south node in the 10th house, north node in the 4th. So, um, there might be some nugget of, nuggets of wisdom there that, that can help you understand that a little bit better. Now, where is your good luck and fortune this year? Where are you likely to get the breaks? Well, it's probably going to be in your 8th and ninth houses where Jupiter will be. Um, first half of this year, um, Jupiter will be in your 8th house from January through June. And so that's really going to help you smooth out any kind of difficulties that you're experiencing during this time. And yes, if you want to get approved for loans or negotiate contracts or renegotiate contracts, um, if you're dealing with the government or you're dealing with shared resources or, my gosh, even doing things like um, investing, you know, where other people are involved, right? In the stock market and crypto, things like that, the shared resources, right, is what we're talking about here. Um, you could really get a lot of breaks on this, okay? Really good breaks. Um, just be careful because the energies of this year, you know, with Jupiter and Pisces in general, and then you put it in the eighth house, well, you know, you, you could be a little over idealistic and maybe not seeing things so clearly. So my advice is, you know, hover the best, plan for the worst. <laughs> okay. And if you're, you know, maybe get a second set of eyes on um, maybe contracts or ideas, you know, to kind of look at another viewpoint before pulling that trigger, so to speak, just to make sure that you're not um, being ungrounded, you know, you're being very grounded in your decisions. Now, June through December, uh, Jupiter will be in Aries impacting that ninth house. So um, this is going to be great if you want to take some uh, trips that are at a distance, quite a distance, long distance travel, you know, or if you're wanting to learn something new and it could simply be about spirituality yet again, where you are reflecting on life's lessons and it could be really this entire year, whether we're talking about Jupiter and Pisces or Jupiter um, in Aries, um, eighth and ninth houses, right? Very spiritual stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, Jupiter and Pisces are very spiritual. And then you put in the eighth house, which has a lot to do with the underworld, <laughs> the spiritual dimension, which I'm really seeing there, by the way. Um, and then, you know, the second half of the year, Jupiter in Aries in the ninth house. Ninth house is also a very, very spiritual house, kind of representing gurus, higher, higher learning, philosophy, okay? And so um, this entire year could really be... Um, quite a spiritual year for you, but particularly the second half, it gets very philosophical. And then, you know, during this time as well, uh, Jupiter will try in your first house, and that's really helping you to redefine your beliefs. Positive stuff. And so, and I, I, so I'm going to talk more about this when we get into love and romance coming up soon, but um, yeah, if you're looking for love this year, it's probably going to be found uh, with, um, you know, Areas of life having to do with, um, you know, eighth and ninth house matters, okay? Long distance travel, um, foreigners maybe, um, higher learning, okay? Spirituality or government or getting, you know, shared resources, stuff like that. Well, we just had the world card come out. So you are successfully completing something and I'm hearing the life lessons, okay? And again, this might have been something that <clears throat> just prior to this year was maybe in your periphery, but you didn't see it so clearly, okay? You didn't understand it as clearly, and this is something getting reconciled within yourself. It's some, I'm hearing deeply buried in your subconscious mind. You're finally going to get closure on this life lesson by the end of this year um, and really integrate this really integrate this positively what is this life lesson about now i'm getting curious oh my goodness look at that wow 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 okay you regenerating after having been under a lot a lot of burdens possibly having to do with you know money finances the practicalities in life and avoiding conflict with those things taking a really practical approach and avoiding 
a battle of wills with people, maybe over money and finances and responsibilities. It's you figuring out how to regenerate. I'm hearing begin again, okay? Um, I'll put that off to the side. It's a side note. Let's talk about the challenges in uh, the seventh house. Um, well, you know, Saturn's going to be in your seventh house of committed partnerships. So many of you have been dealing with relationship pressures. And it's been said that this transit is one that is really a testing ground. Only the strong relationships are going to survive. Um, and yeah, if it ain't working, don't work it, okay? Because it's not built to last. Um, once Saturn gets out of the seventh house, the, the long-term committed relationships that you still have are meant to endure the test of time, okay? Um, yeah, that's the good news out of the bad news. <laughs> Not fun. I mean, I, I'm not gonna lie to you. Like when Saturn was going through my seventh house, I was getting a divorce. And I know I've had clients come to me, and you know, with this this transit, and and they're they're maybe not getting a divorce, but they're ending a ten year plus relationship with somebody that you know never manifested in uh, a marriage, but it more or less was, you know, that kind of a commitment. So. Uh, that just wanted to peek out the nine of swords some of you a very whatever this whatever you have been worried or concerned about and i'm also here intention and partnerships relationships um it's being brought to the forefront with this transit of saturn in your seventh house now i gotta warn you that um fall is gonna be rough for a lot of people and that just flipped um Some of you trying to control these worries, trying to hold yourself back because of these worries. You're concerned about getting forward movement or putting yourself out there or trying to, somebody I'm hearing doesn't want to rock the boat. That's what I'm hearing. Um, let me say in the fall, oh God, this, these cards are really want to talk. Might have to do with the water sign, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, um, or again, somebody regretful and sorry about something okay and it might also have to do with love messages okay but in the fall when saturn and uranus square that's occurring between your 10th and 7th houses so you know this could bring back some old relationship dramas um from last year right there's going to be a little bit of repeating energy from last year so um, hopefully, this is going to be conclusive for this entire cycle, right? My tie into these life lessons that came up earlier. Um, and maybe you didn't see it as a life lesson, but now you're going to be like, ha uh ha, -huh, uh, that's what that was about. Okay. Um, things, you know, once you get past the fall, things are going to really start to change. And so, um, try to uh, work on problem solving as much as you can um, that's going to be very beneficial for you because you don't want to go into the next new year 2023 with these problems you want to you want to successfully close out this cycle so whatever it is that's coming up that is causing you concern in 2022 and making you feel like you got to hold yourself back maybe making you feeling sorry and regretful about something you need to really process and resolve this again i'm being brought back to uh, you know now this is starting to make more sense this is what's getting reconciled within yourself with your emotional life right these are cards about emotional life and so some of you um yes maybe you are reconciling with the next yes maybe it is a water sign cancer scorpio pisces um, for others of you, you're maybe reconciling something within yourself um, about a romantic relationship, and it's been really emotional. Yeah, I feel with the Five of Cups, you're going to probably uh, accept your losses and and move on. I'm sorry to say, um, this is an energy where if if you can't mend fences with this person or you know reconcile, resolve the situation. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to accept your losses and you're going to move on. And that's good because that would bring this into this, which is where I want to see this card. I want to see you breaking free of this self-limitation because you don't have 
maybe the confidence or the, the trust in yourself or in your circumstances. And um, I think that, again, with all the Pisces energy for you this year, that's really going to help. But um, don't be afraid to let any relationships leave your life that need to leave, okay? Uh, and I think that you're going to come to this point where of acceptance. I think you're going to be like, all right, good, goodbye, God bless you, happy trails to you, because we all need to get on with life, right? Onward and upward. Um, but I think that um, also this is a year that you, you need to assert your needs and expectations, and that would be by you putting that card right in the, in the reverse where I want to see it. So um, some of you, this might actually involve your career. Let me say this, um, which we'll talk about more in a little bit. We'll, we'll do a career reading, okay? But just generally speaking, this energy in the late fall that is going to be dicey for a lot of people, well, specific to you, this might, you know, because of the North Node, um, involve, you know, your career. So it would be wise. And because it's happening, by the way, between your 10th and 7th houses. And 7th houses can also be about contracts and business partnerships, just by the way. It doesn't have to be about marriage, um, a long-term relationship. So um, on the career front, you know, try your best to, um, as much as you can help it, keep your love life separate from your career life until the end of October. Um this could bring about difficulties with the people that you work with. So try, uh, try to uh, not, not get sucked into um, the turbulence of the overall energy and understand other people are going through their own private battles and they bring their baggage to work, right? We all know this. Okay, so once this energy, this challenging energy passes for all of us um, collectively, things are going to slow down, especially as Jupiter retrogrades back into your eighth house. And um, at the close of this year, I think not only are things going to um, calm down for you, but, you know, the focus is going to be less outward and it's going to become more inward as we get into, like, uh, November, December time frame. And... Um, with Jupiter back in that eighth house placement, it's going to be a good time for you to reevaluate old debts, financial and emotional, right? Um, and try to um, deal with any kind of um, outstanding issues, like I said, before you get into the next year. You want to try to start 2023 off with a clean slate. Um, There might be some unexpected displays of kindness that come up during this time, or maybe um, surprise gifts. Ooh, wow. Well, um, or some good news regarding the law or the government. But I got um, that if that was going to come up, it has to do with a disagreement. So, yeah, maybe, maybe a surprise. Somebody who you were not in agreement with earlier this year, um, something, uh, look at that, something shifts and changes. Lovely, um, with that wheel of fortune. So, but again, I'm getting some cards here indicating that, uh, you know, the it, it is possible that this is a year where you will maybe have an ex come back, maybe reunite. But for others of you, this is a cycle, okay? Some kind of cycles that you keep going through, because I'm also getting cycles here with the world and the um, Wheel of Fortune card. And you needing to break that cycle by reconciling something within yourself on a deep, emotional, subconscious level. All right, so let's put those off to the side, and let's move on to your love rating for this year, and um, yeah, let's, we're talking more astrology, and starting off uh, in January of 2022, we are all experiencing Venus retrograde and Capricorn, which is going to make things feel a bit slow um, on a day-to-day -day basis, especially it could really try your patience um, if you're working in group projects, because yeah, this is impacting your sixth house, all right, which has to do with daily health habits and work routines and just really practical the mundane life okay 
if you are partnered during Venus retrograde in this house, or at least by the end of January, oh, oh. Um, you're going to have to overcome some kind of challenges that are hindering your life together. And what I'm getting here with the Hermit card is some of you feeling that maybe you are alone. Either you are single or you're feeling alone in a relationship. And for others of you, it's like I'm hearing odd man stuck out. But I'm hearing that some of you are feeling that you are being refused in some respect. Either refused a relationship or the fullness of one. You're in a relationship, but it's almost like you're watching other people. And it's something, and I'm getting this intuitively, it's like I'm seeing you watching other people, like looking at what they have and almost like valuing, I wish I had what they had, like you're valuing togetherness, okay, um, companionship. There's something about it that, that you are valuing and you're like, that's right. And all of us, by the way, collectively during Venus Retrograde are going to be reviewing, looking back upon what we value in our relationships with our love life what nourishes us okay who's bringing the goods now if you are experiencing difficulties during this time frame that was hopping um things are going to get better by march yes yeah with the empress card uh, might be an aries relevant or a mother wife figure but regardless i'm seeing a lot of growth and fertility here uh, you know some of you may be thinking about having kids okay others of you um i'm seeing an invitation okay an offer being put out there for you in uh, possibly march if things are really slow for you and you're looking for an offer okay um, but until this happens until this occurs right this Energy, I'd say the first three months of the year, romantically, it just relationships take on a very serious tone, particularly with Saturn being in your seventh house. Very serious, um, right? And this retrograde. Um, so, and that's regardless of, you know, whether or not you're partnered. And so it is a time of reflection on relationships that is bringing about a level of maturity and understanding towards what it takes to build a long lasting relationship that endures and that both parties value. And so I do see even let's say if things, you know, if you don't get an offer by, you know, starting around March, I see you very much reflecting on um, getting or giving an offer and you're reflecting on what you need to do to get the growth in the direction that you want in your love life. But with Saturn in that seventh house, like I said, it's going to demand a lot from you and partnerships will be very important. And maybe the possibility of commitment um, is there. You know, if, if you are in a relationship uh, during this time, um, it is possible that the, the commitment will deepen. Um, some of you, maybe if you, you know, you're not living with that person, you could decide to live together or you could decide to get married for some of you, right? But you're going to um, have to go through some obstacles and some demands that Saturn puts in that seventh house. Um, I'm hearing grounded manifestation with the Ace of Pentacles of, okay, I'm going to get a new beginning, but this is a relationship that's got to bring what I value, right? It's got to nourish me, mind, body, spirit, okay? And um, if you put the work in and lay those solid foundations in a relationship, then you're going to get rewarded with Saturn there. You know, by the end of, by the time Saturn gets out of that seventh house, you're going to be rewarded um, by putting the work into those relationships. But not until it gets out of that seventh house, you know. And this is about emotional balance as well. This is about healing something, all right, and the give and take in relationships. And, you know, I do see also with this card a lot of um, spiritual guidance here being offered to you on, you know, your love life. But some of you are quite discontent, and that's part of the reflection process is what is making me unhappy and what do I need to get do to get to that happy place where I want to get expansion and I want to build from that. Now, if you're in a commitment, Saturn, you know, like I said, is uh, not, not going to be easy, all right? It's going to challenge the relationship, but on the positive, it's going to give you the opportunity to deepen that bond. Um, and even, yeah, make it official, but you're going to have to be very realistic, all right, and, and not have any 
pie in the sky expectations. But if the relationship is just run its course, I mean, it's gonna, that's what's going to be revealed, okay, with this, this transit. And so let me, let me see what cards we have on that. Um, and, you know, I'm thinking, like, let me put this over here um, so that we can keep keep it okay um yeah, these come out we're talking about the committed partners all right um tower in reverse knight of swords ace of swords i am seeing that some of you are really you know trying to avoid a fallout in this relationship but in order to do that, there's going to have to be a very deliberate effort, um, very decisive action taken to get on the same page mentally. And it's going to come through talking and having a meeting of the minds. And I'm hearing there's power and agreement, power and agreement. If you want to avoid a fallout, you're going to have to get on the same page, okay? And there's got to be truth here, all right? People got to be brutally honest, okay? Brutally honest and understand, yeah, with this air energy, this is about, you know, let's let's talk about the truth. Let's talk about the reality. Um, let's be logical and mature here. Um, and let's not make this emotional, right? Let's not over emotionalize this. Uh, perhaps an Aquarius, Libra, or Gemini is relevant, by the way. Okay, but it, it's almost taken a very air sign approach, and sometimes uh, air signs are faulted for being overly logical and seemingly to be emotionally cut off. Um, for some of you, might have to do with a King of Wands, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Well, that's you. Okay. This is about, I love this King of Wands in this deck. This is my favorite, okay, King of Wands out of all my decks because it just really embodies the way I want to see the fire signs, particularly fire sign males, okay, where he is totally, with that passionate energy, he's matching effort. He is as committed to her as she is to him. And so this is very much about you getting on the same page in terms of matching um, effort in terms of commitment that's the only way you're going to involve you know avoid a fallout is what i'm getting for the um com committed fire signs all right now if you're single with venus and retrograde until the end of january you know it just hang in there because i see it really really energy it, the energy for everybody collectively is just making it hard uh to make any any advances and i saw that there with that hermit card okay um, which can indicate a period of solitude in your life or really reflecting and trying to get some insight, all right? So try to use this energy um, as best you can. There's King of Pentacles, could be Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Um, but that's, again, about trust, which I, I mentioned earlier. It's about being very grounded and... Um, having a very practical down to earth um, approach. So um, try to take care of yourself as much as possible. Dedicate yourself to work because of that North Node in the 10th house is a good use of the energy. And then by March, yeah, you might have some good news and some romance. Um, definitely into April, yeah, I am seeing a romantic offer here with the Knight of Chalices. Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces might be relevant. But again, I'm seeing it tied to, you know, I'm seeing both of these cards offer, okay, an invitation. And this is more romantic. This is more sexual, all right? And I, with the two aces, I'm seeing an opportunity for new partnership this year, okay? Um, but again, the offer for the singles is really coming from a place of what, what is going to give me forward movement with what I value, some of you, though, um, you, you know, you, there's a splash of idealism here with that Knight of Chalices. Some of you also uh, maybe not entirely 
putting yourself out there like the fire sign you are, right? Bold, passionate, warmth, like this guy, okay? That's what I really want to see right there. This is kind of a, I'm going to dip my toes in the pool and see if it's warm enough for me to go for a swim, okay? Uh, I'm not, I'm not really, I'm, I'm not impressed with that, Leo. All right, y'all can do better, okay? Y'all can do better. That's peeking out. Hierophant, you want your commitment minded. Oh, you want it. You're about it. All right. And so, and this might, you know, have to do with your beliefs, okay, on romance and, and building something, a relationship that is solid. So, um, that's, I really feel hinging this, this maybe treading lightly type of approach that you're doing with your dating life this year. I do think that, um, you know, if you are looking uh, for a soulmate, March, April are good months for you. November and December are very positive as well. And, you know, on the relationship front, <laughs> yeah, some, some of you, some of you are dealing with somebody not putting work in. Okay. And I, and I think that, it, let me just say committed or single, if somebody is not putting the work in, they're not matching commitment, they're not matching effort, you don't feel you can trust this, right? This is an energy as well for the singles of, you know, every time you move forward, that other person pulls back and what's being offered is modest, all right? If somebody is not putting the effort in, I, I don't think it's going to go anywhere, okay? And that goes for you too, by the way, Leo, that if you are not really Right, with Saturn in that seventh house, you you know, in order to get a break, you've got to put the effort in. And then you put the effort in, it'll reward you once Saturn gets out of that seventh house, okay? I'm going to say also on the, you know, with relationships, Mars is going to be in Gemini from August onward. And that's going to be really good for your friendships. And yeah, maybe even help you with um, romance with friends from August onward could be a good month for finding romance with friends. All right, but I am moving on now to career and money and let's see, you know, what is going on for Leo with career and money that wanted to come out. And, and this is uh, four of swords. Okay. What is this inactive type of energy that I'm I'm getting off of y'all? Okay, like that came up in the love reading. That's not putting the work in. And this is like, uh, I'm just going to take a time out here. What is that about? Um, let me say astrologically, you could be spending a lot of money this year in terms of improving your status, like making status upgrades. Ooh, let's tell you what, this was also at the bottom when I pulled that card and I it just fell out. Okay, so I think for some of you, this is, you're having to balance <laughs> your income with your expenses, all right, and really listen to spirit. Um, some of you have just, I don't know why I'm seeing medical expenses. Some of you, um, medical expenses, where is that coming from? Um, some of you praying, meditating, trying to get angelic guidance with what you're trying to do about your money. Well, the astrology is telling me that it could be a year where you're just spending a lot, a lot of money. Um, and, and you need to find balance on that. Um, it could be that, um, like I said earlier, with Jupiter in your eighth house, maybe you're getting into a mutual investment, stocks, cryptocurrencies, maybe buying land um, that has other people, you know, on the deed, okay, or on the lease or something like that. Just be very careful about impulsive decisions. Try to stay grounded. I think this is a year where you're going to see a lot of positive growth with your money, your income, maybe some gains with your professional work, and that could be through like a bonus or winning a contract or something like that. Um, in some way, uh, there is some kind of unexpected gain coming um, through your income sources. But just be careful, especially in the first quarter of 2022, when we have Venus retrograde and Capricorn, right? Because um, Venus is not just about love. It's about everything that nourishes mind, body, spirit. So, yeah, this could be very much on the practical end that things are going, going slow, but... Um, you know, if there are challenges that come up in the first quarter of the year, this, um, yeah, can be very, you know, t 
tiring. It could, you know, especially with this happening in your sixth house, by the way, having to do with your day-to-day -day work. Um, but it will help you um, to figure out what hurdles, what challenges you need to overcome. And then if you do, then it is very likely that, again, you're going to be rewarded for this. And yeah, it might be that um, <laughs> in some way um, your colleagues respect you more or you get more acceptance or recognition in the workplace or the people that you work with. And I'm seeing Seven of Swords and the Death card. So some of you... Um, I think one of the, the, the challenges that, that could be coming up in the first quarter of this year with your money is that you need to figure out a new strategy. You've got to figure out how to break free of some kind of restriction where maybe you felt, I'm hearing like backed up against the wall where you thought something had reached the point of no return and you, you're like, I don't know how to work with this. I don't know how to get around this. This seems impossible, okay? You, well, you're going to have to come up with a new strategy and I think if you can crack that code and figure it out, you know, and be a problem solver, um, then that's going to win you something, maybe a contract or, again, some kind of recognition that in some way blesses you for the rest of the year materially. Four of Wands in reverse might have to do with a breakdown of communication, okay? Um, or somebody going through a very, very difficult time might have to do with Scorpio in the South Node, just going to say all those... Yeah, you got to go watch my video on um, that in the 2020 astro, 2022 Astrological Forecast. I talk more about that on there. Um, wow, these cards just really want to come out. Might have to do with an Aquarian. Go watch the Aquarius reading. <laughs> I'm sorry. But again, this is about your, I think, your ambitions. Um, and what you're striving for. You know, um, some, again, this is about recognition with your work, but um, I feel that you will get recognition during the first quarter, or if during, the, I should say, if during the first quarter you come up with a new strategy to um, break through these difficulties in communication or a difficult time where somebody felt like, I can't see my way around this you're going to be rewarded and acknowledged for that really, really positive stuff. So um, just keep in mind that, you know, it's not just you going through restrictions with all this collective energy. It's it's all of us, right? So um, this is just another another energy pushing you towards reevaluating um, your career, your money, and that reevaluation might, the pressure might be there to do that with, you know, things whatever this is that is presenting some kind of challenge or obstacle to you. And yeah, whatever changes, um, you know, may happen in your career, um, even though they might be positive, there's Miss Kitty joining us again. Um, even though they might be positive, um, I think it's going to be important to um, try to um, not, not let it get, control of your your peace so let, don't let it steal your peace okay um with six of swords some of you though are having trouble moving on okay and it, it's very much a mental uh, um, energy somewhat emotional but you, you know you're having trouble moving on um and maybe under like i think that you know you need to get on from this whatever the difficulty is but it's it's like trying to figure out how you're going to have to come up with a new strategy is going to be the, the solution okay you're going to have to think outside the box is what i'm hearing um but don't make unthinking random impulsive ungrounded decisions <laughs> um i think most of you particularly the leo women are going to be very um, cautious generally speaking and determined at the beginning of the year but it could be that you're having to review some kind of attitude or um, the way that you relate to your work or the way that you carry out your work, especially in terms of others that you work with, colleagues, bosses. Um, but it will be a good opportunity to, with these reevaluations to discern, discern how could you renegotiate agreements or make better agreements in the future. 
and this could also, by the way, this Venus retrograde in your sixth house might reactivate some kind of professional contacts from the past. It might revive um, previous connections that you had with your career, maybe getting a second chance with a job that you previously had or that you were denied or that canceled. They might call you back and say, okay, you're, you know, come on back. We need you. So now by the end of April and May, you could have really good professional opportunities coming up. And then after 2022, um, really good in terms of taking in profits from investments and maybe even making large real estate purchases and um, possibly purchasing a car, very likely after April, okay? And what I'm seeing here is with the Three of Swords in reverse and the Two of Swords, um, it looks like you are going to kind of recover from a stalemate. If there was some kind of standoff and stalemate, that's going to move forward. And financially, when you get into August and September, it's going to be a very positive month for you um, around your birthday, particularly um, Leo season. Uh, might get a little bit hectic, though, I will say, because we're having that triple conjunction in your 10th house involving the North Node, Mars, and Uranus. Uh, so, again, I talked about that in the 2022 astrological forecast. I'll put a link for a video link at the very end of this one so you can just click on through. Um, but, yeah, I'm seeing with the Queen of Wands in reverse, somebody's really demanding and angry. Um, wow, then that's feminine fire sign energy. So I really think that's you. You could be pissed off at somebody. All right. Ain't gonna lie. Or you're impatient with them. This is a very demanding type of energy. Um, and, and right that popped out as I was talking about that triple conjunction. Okay. So there could be some unexpected upheavals that come up during this time in August around your birthday. Very busy time. Um, but yes, this could be workplace drama for some of you. Um, maybe want to lay low during this time if you can. It might be very hard, though, because I see it also this is impacting your first house and maybe why you're coming up in reverse here. Like, it's really impacting you, all right? And whatever this is that's going on during this time, it's, a, it's an energy. It'll pass. It is temporary. What is this about? What is this about? Okay, hold on. I'm being told to go to a different deck. Wait a second. Okay. What is this about? Um, I think it's just going to be, you know, it's going to be hard to stay calm. All right. What What is Leo upset about during August of 2022? Please clarify this. Queen of Wands and that one wants to come out. Oh, that one came out too. Okay. Oh, shit. That's about money. Somebody's making a... Uh, a very important decision about money or a very important in person person in your life is making a decision about money and i don't think that you're happy about it okay leo i'm sorry just try to stay calm it's going to calm down uh, by the end of this year okay let me say if you are looking for work um <laughs> Um, Uranus has brought some, will bring some unpredictable twists and turns, okay, to your uh, professional life throughout the year, um, and might, you know, make things a little bit more, maybe make you more daring and willing to take some, take some random, random moves with your career, some risks that you maybe wouldn't have previously done, um, eight of wands in reverse, five of wands in the reverse, I think that um, this can be about delays and miscommunication, um, and this can be about, oh, well, this could be about, well, avoiding a conflict, but also, so I don't know if you're, you're going to, going to purposely if just not right if you're going to fall off the radar and that goes back to four of swords of why are you not taking it's almost like you're not talking or somebody's not talking to you because they're trying to avoid a conflict okay and this is also somebody not getting progress because they're being conflict avoidant I'm going to say this I feel that I'm being led to give you advice here Leo if you want progress Right? You want to put this in the reverse. 
I'm sorry to say, but you're going to have to assert yourself. You're going to have to get more competitive with that five of wands. You're going to have to communicate more and let the chips fall where they may. And yeah, this is about you being willing to take the risk of people saying, no, we don't agree with you. No, we don't want to work with you or getting fired up because you're competing with them. Uh, do not be conflict avoidant because it's going to cost you is really what I'm seeing here. Um, having an unwillingness to get in the ring is, is going to hold you back. So work with this Uranian energy throughout the year. And, um, you know, like I've been saying to all the, the fixed signs, you being one of them, um, Taurus, Scorpio, and Aquarius being the other three, um, this is a year that we're going to have to be more agile. We're going to have to be more flexible. We're going to have to flex and flow with it and roll with the punches, okay? If we want to get forward movement. And this is you, yeah, being more daring, taking risks and doing something that you've never done before. And again, I'm going to go back to this over here where it's like, you got to think outside the box, Uranus, you want a revolution? You want to revolutionize your career, your finances? You're going to have to take another approach. And it might be an approach that maybe people told you was foolish. Why are you doing that? Nobody does it like that. This is the way we always do it. Why don't you, you know, follow the rules and stay in, in you know, color in the lines? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, all right, let me say, for those of you who are working this year or, you know, maybe our students, despite all of the instability, um, you know, try not to let anxiety take over, okay? Um, and I did see that in the love reading, by the way. That maybe it's having to do more with your relationships that you're getting some, you know, getting a little bit worried. Um, but again... Um, try to risk something new or propose some kind of new innovation in your current job because that's what's going to move you forward this year. Um, and if you work in the area of technology, super positive. Look, the sun just came out. The blessing, the blessing is on, yeah, some of you are going to be shown this year how being conflict avoidant is mucking up your communications, which is causing you to not get progress and forward movement in your life. If you are a student, it's going to be really uh, good for you with your studies from May, between May and October, and um, even the, the month of December, really good time for that. If you are an employee or um, a business owner, um, you have a very high chance of going abroad to do some, you know, work. Uh, traveling, you know, long distance travel for business reasons. Some of you might also have the opportunity to get a job transfer to a bigger city. And that's going to really benefit your career a lot. Although with that south node in the fourth house, not so sure you're going to feel that, you know, that you, that warm, cozy sense of belonging, right? And maybe leaving what feels like home behind, okay? Um, or maybe in some way this is encroaching upon your private life or your your home life, okay? So try to, again, keep that ba balance with that north node and that fourth house. Um, but anyway, you are, um, you know, you're likely, honestly, to get growth in your career through a, a an existing line of work or, or, you know, employment, okay? But not so much. Um, through changing a job, okay, or getting a promotion to a higher position, all right? Um, the, the, the changes, the improvements to your career are going to be with existing lines of work and employment, not new, all right? And um, so given that, I, I wouldn't encourage trying to change jobs or trying to, you know, appeal for a promotion to a higher position, it's going to be good, though, if you want to grow within a company and strengthen your existing career and lay a stronger foundation from which you can build on. Well, there we go with the Ace of Pentacles. You got to, this is very foundational. Okay, that Ace came up in your, your love reading. Uh, and I've been saying that in the, the um, 2022 astrological forecast, right? That this is about you um, with you know, collectively with the North Node in Taurus, we're looking about at where's the value. 
What is benefiting me? What's stable? What's solid? So, solid foundations being laid with your relationships and with your career, from what I can see with that Ace of Pentacles coming out twice. Um, and again, Ace of Pentacles is, you, you know, well, usually it could mean like uh, some new property, okay? And I, and I did say that with your astrology. You're going to increase in status this year. But um, I'm also seeing a new stream of income for you opening up, all right? Um, again, it's not, it's, it's with your existing line of work. It's not because you go out and start a whole new business that you've never done before. It's because maybe you figure some new strategy, you think outside the box of how can I offer a new service or a new product with the work that I'm doing? How can we address the problems that our clients or customers are now dealing with that is new, but we now have a new product or a service that really helps and assists with this? That's how you get the forward movement. And so I do see that um, if you're doing business this year, you are developing some kind of new stream of cash flow that is going to expand the business financially and professionally. And finally, I want to say if you're trying to move this year, I'm sorry to say not a lot of astrological support for that. I, I mean, look, sometimes that ace could be a new home, but again, all things considered with the astrology, I think it could be, you know, a new vehicle. It could be, um, yeah, look at that, Ten of Swords again. Y'all had that before where things are regenerating in your life, just generally. Where did I see that? Uh, I, I, I hope you remember it came out before. Um, yeah, there it is. Same card, different deck, both in reverse, saying that you are beginning again, okay? You are regenerating from a period of defeat, a lot of defeats. You are beginning again and regenerating anew. This is coming up financially. This is coming up generally, all right? Um, let me say also that, yeah, on the moving front, I mean, that ace, sometimes it could mean a new home, but given your astrology, it might be property, uh, real estate investment. I don't know. And again, look at your sun moon rising. If you're partnered, um, look at their stuff because sometimes, yeah, we get blessings through partners and particularly with the Jupiter in that eighth house for you, uh, the first half of the year. Yeah, you could get blessing coming in from maybe the marriage partner or business partner um, or family inheritance, something like that brings in um, this new home or new property. But in terms of just on you alone, um, uh, Leo rising, I don't see a lot of astrological support for getting moved this year. I'm sorry to say for those of you who are wanting to get moved. There's always exceptions, like I said. Um, look at your Look at your unique astrology. Successful funding. Your idea is divinely guided and supported by the same infinite wisdom of God that gave you the idea. Do not allow money concerns to prevent you from turning it into a reality. Crowdfunding, partnership, and other investments are available to help you. And there we go with the partnerships. Um, all right. With Saturn in, in your seventh house of partnerships, I'm going to say... Uh, and your north node in that 10th house of status, all right? I'm going to say that um, in those two aces, ace of pentacles, you get around some solid people, <laughs> all right? Um, this is saying allow healthful, supportive people into your personal life and career, and both parties will benefit as a result. You are receiving help from heaven and from a person who brings needed skills and resources. So I told you with that temperance showing up, which I think showed up twice as well, you do have a lot of angelic support for this, okay? Let's see um, what you need to be working on healing, and that's where we're gonna close off. Um, and, you know, let's see what you need to be working on overall this year with the energies. Um, try to take advantage of the beginning of the year. As I said before, um, with Venus retrograde Capricorn in your sixth house. Um, there's perhaps some kind of health habits <clears throat> that need to change. Okay, reflect on that because sixth house is also about you know your health. So um, try to maybe implement some daily routines and um, take on 
yeah, I don't know, like maybe working out um, 10 to 15 minutes a day or getting at least 15 minutes of direct sunlight a day. It's a little thing. It's a little things, okay? Um, you need to look at these daily habits. Are you smoking every day? Are you, um, you know, chugging down sodas every day? Are you going to McDonald's, you know, <laughs> fast food every day? Like, could you stop doing that? What kind of um, effect would these little daily changes make on your overall health? That's something that you need to reflect on um, in January. And um, I am seeing the cards that came out here are about inner, inner truth, the wisdom of the heart, insight, clarity, purity, intuitive knowing, consciousness, penetrating illusion. And so I think some of you deep down already know what it is that you need to work on healing this year within yourself, okay? Um, and some of you, yeah, I don't know if you noticed this came out in reverse. I'm going to let you see it and read it. It says study progress, gaining confidence, accepting challenges, a promotion, receiving recognition. Well, we saw that with your, you know, the star card coming out in your financial reading where you're getting some kind of recognition this year. But let me say that for some of you, because this came in reverse, I and, and you know, given given that four of swords that, that came out that I saw, um, there's there's just some other energies as well. Yeah, eight of eight of pentacles in reverse in your love reading, and the the four of swords in your your financial reading. There's this energy that I'm getting off of this that you know that you you're not really putting yourself out there the way that you need to and deep down you know it and again this might go back to this issue that uh, there's some kind of subconscious right that you need to reconcile within yourself about maybe uh, has been going on a very long time missing opportunities um maybe not coming together with other people maybe not being as sociable as you need to um reconciling something within yourself okay that is causing you and i'm being brought back again to that eight of somebody being conflict avoidant like uh the the communication is just jacked up because somebody doesn't want to ruffle any feathers you know they're they're afraid of um conflict they're afraid of a reversal of fortune they're afraid of rejection maybe and um as a result they never really find their tribe they never really give people the opportunity to show themselves as you know a viable partner or not right i'm gonna say risk putting yourself out there leo risk it because um yes yeah, so what if if people tell you you know we're not on board with you good you need to know that you you need to know who's team leo and who's not that gives you the the clarity of who who it is you need to lay down right those solid foundations with because that's where you're ultimately going to get the success that's going to give you the forward movement right that's going to write the forward movement that's going to allow you to put that eight of wands in the upright so you get progress so you get growth by the way, it's out here on the table. You know, it's out here for the grabbing, all right? You, you, you know, you want growth and fertility, whether we're talking about relationships or finances, it's here. But you're going to have to, like, I just heard stand for something or you fall for anything. I don't know who that's for, but somebody needed to hear it. I'm going to say finally, astrologically, from May onward, Jupiter, when it's in Aries, I think you will have more confidence. It might be this first half of the year that, you, you know, you're not really, you're, this is a very almost reflective, meditative, <laughs> Jupiter and Pisces, you know, type of vibe here, okay? But hopefully you put this like that by the second half of the year when Jupiter goes into Aries. And at that point, look, the sun in Leo on the 22nd is going to, you know, come up for you in July. Uh, the 22nd when the, the sun goes in Leo and that's going to give you a boost of self-confidence and energy and then with the new moon in Leo by the end of July this is hopefully going to stimulate more creativity on your part and leave you a lot more inspired so I'm going to say this I'm going to say that going back to you know what came out here I think you're going to finish this year out really well um Leo I do believe you're going to 
you know, I, I don't know if you're going to see it the first half of the year, okay? Because the first, because this year, you're working out something within yourself on an emotional level, on a spiritual level, subconscious as well. But you close out this year integrating this life lesson, reconciling something within yourself. And I think by the second half of this year, you're going to start seeing really getting that push forward. Um, but you might already know what it is. It's just going to maybe take the first half of the year to really close that out. Okay. Well, I hope this reading has blessed you. And um, until next time, please know I'm wishing you all the best. Have a wonderful 2022. Be blessed.